In preparation for the big trip next month, we have a lot of decisions to work through. And chief among them are the what if scenarios. What if we're stuck on the side of the road with a mechanical issue, illness, or injury? Well, for most of the time, this device is the answer, your trusty cell phone. You can summon 911 assistance, you can call your roadside assistance program, and they can send you a tow truck. But what if you're in one of those areas with no cell phone coverage? We have a large brand name service provider, and even they tell us that there's still five to 15% of the United States that does not have coverage. We've even found places along the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia and North Carolina that doesn't have coverage. And we're going to be going to the Southwest United States where according to our provider, there are many areas where there is no coverage. And a guy named Murphy once said that the odds of you needing help is greatly increased in the areas where there is no cell phone coverage. But fortunately, there is a solution for that problem. The technology is readily available, highly effective, and relatively inexpensive. So that's going to be today's video topic. We are John and Miriam. We may live along the Virginia coast, but for the next few months, we will again call the road our home. We plan to ride our Can-Am Spider to the Pacific coast and back, over 7,000 miles through 16 states. We are calling this trip a lap around America. We know this odyssey will offer up its full survey of adventure, scenic beauty, along with the standard dose of challenges. But that's what we signed up for. Before we get started, I need to issue a disclaimer. This video is for information purposes only. The misuse of this particular piece of technology can cause serious consequences. So please do your own homework, follow the manufacturer's recommendations, and don't rely just on this video. Now, that being said, what are we talking about? It's a piece of technology and a support system that I frankly hope we never have to use, just like my spare tire and my fire extinguisher. Don't ever want to use those things, but if I don't have it and need it, it can result in some serious consequences. So exactly what are we talking about? This is the Spot brand personal emergency locator beacon and satellite based communication system. Let's start with some of the basic functions and features of the system. To power it up, you simply push this button, hold it, it goes through a self diagnostic and then it turns itself on and you can tell it's operational by the power button is flashing green. If it flashes red, that means your batteries are about dead and you need to take care of that. Note, you cannot recharge the batteries in this device. Even though they are lithium batteries, they are non-rechargeable. The manufacturer recommends you simply get replacement batteries. How long will the batteries last? Well, the manufacturer says if you simply turn it off and use it for emergency purposes only, it'll last 18 months. We're going to go into a and we're going to change the batteries out uh, in the spring of each year, probably about the same time we do the uh, maintenance on the Spider. Um, if they say if you're using it regularly uh, for uh, position plots, it can last uh, up to about 14 to 60 days, depending on the frequency that you have your location transmitted out. This device requires a subscription through the Spot Network. Without the subscription, your device is useless. It won't talk to anybody. So you gotta buy the device and get a subscription. Now this device has the ability to send uh, your SOS, an emergency message, a urgent but non-emergency or non-life-threatening message, and then some routine communications. Your first one is a simple check-in message. Now you get to go online to the website when you set up your subscription and change what the message text will read when it's transmitted and who it's sent to. Then you have a location uh, button. You can simply press this button and you hold it and it transmits just your location without a message. This one is a custom message button. You can go into the system and customize your messages uh, for this uh, well in advance. Bear in mind, this is a one-way system only. So once you set up the messages, 
that is what's going to be transmitted when you press these series of buttons. And you have no other feedback other than the fact that the system will reply that your transmission message has been received. Now, this is your help button. You go into the system and set up your custom help button on basically the situation uh, as needed for you. We have set the help button uh, up so it will alert specific family members by text and by email. Uh, it, it's designed that if we have a mechanical breakdown and need roadside assistance to uh, uh, notify our insurance company's roadside assistance program. And we'll include the account number, the phone number, and they already know who we are because they're a family. And they will be able to uh, contact roadside assistance for us. And also it will give them our location so they can transmit that to uh, the insurance company who can then call the closest tow truck to come uh, get us and take us to a repair shop. To activate this, you simply pull up on the cover and press that button. Now, when you do that, if you but once you've done this, your family and the people you've listed will receive a message that you've broken down and you need a tow truck to your current location. So don't press it unless you actually expect to get a tow truck or whatever the message is that you send your friends and family for the I need help button. Next is the SOS button. Now this is only to be used in a life threatening situation when you need some help now. The, uh, to activate it, you simply pull up on the cover, press and hold the red button until the message icon flashes. It sends out an SOS to uh, the receiving station for spot, which automatically sends it over to the NOAA and the Air Force Search and Rescue Coordination Center uh, through a series of 50-some satellites that are in Earth orbit and they will then start sending the cavalry based on your need. Now, each situation is different. They're gonna receive a message which you would have your basic information in, who you are, and you could also input any medical conditions you might have, uh, anything that you would want a search and rescue control center to be aware of before they start looking for you. They're gonna know exactly where you're at because this is a GPS locator. So if you're on a roadway, I suspect that they will start off by sending local law enforcement to you. In most cases, that's going to take care of the problem. In our case, we don't plan on leaving the roads uh, or, and doing any real off-road travel. We might do some day hikes, but they will be few and far between. If the satellite location system says that you're off-road, what they will Typically what happens next is the Civil Air Patrol gets notified. They are the uh, civilian auxiliary to the United States Air Force. I served with them for six years, some years ago, and pretty much that's most of what they do is civilian search and rescue. And they will then start with uh, aviation units to uh, check your location, and then they will send in ground teams as needed to assist in recovery. If you're really in a remote section, the Air National Guard will bring in the big guns uh, and they will be able to uh, extract you and get you to medical treatment uh, or wh whatever, whatever the situation is. Now, a word of advice. If you press the SOS button, and it's not a legitimate SOS, either you're screwing around with it or you do it by accident, there is potentially a very large hefty bill that the United States government will give you for doing this. So you don't want to do it uh, randomly just playing and see if they'll send the cavalry to help you out because they will send the cavalry. That's what I did for six years. And I could tell you many a times I got up at two o'clock in the morning to go climb into an airplane and start a search and rescue mission. Sometimes they were false alarms and they got bills from the federal government. The bottom line is this is not a toy. This is a very high tech uh, piece of communications gear that could actually save your life bring in a lot of resources to help you out if needed. And you could also use it for routine communication with your friends and family, uh, also for your routine travel in areas where there are no cell phones. So we're gonna run a actual test on the device. Uh, we are currently uh, sitting in a, in a strip mall area and at this location, and it's a 7-Eleven, 
right there and physical therapy office the first thing I'm going to do is power up the device take off my sunglasses so I can see it now in theory there are 50 some odd satellites in orbit that uh, I'm pretty sure they're multi-role satellites they don't just listen for emergency beacons I think they're a so combination of GPS and the other types of communication satellites anyway first thing we do is power up the device press the power button right here on the side hold it and you can see it's it's flashing the power button is actually flashing on which means we're powered up now I have preloaded into my uh, on my computer my desktop into the system uh, a test message button so we're gonna press and hold the message button for uh, 30 seconds or so until it lights up which means the message has been, is being sent and then I'm gonna take sure take it and put it outside the car so it could have a clear view of the satellites up in space and make contact uh, the device will send the message to the satellite three times uh, just to ensure that they've received the message and it should take it could take up to 10 minutes for it to respond but you are sending a message uh, up to a satellite which may or may not be overhead at the moment and then it has to send it down to the uh, to the network and then out to the people you have pre-designated to receive the message right now for the for the test, I have only designated myself, my email address, to receive the test emails. But you can see, the, besides the power button flashing, the message button is also flashing. Which means the message has been successfully sent. And look at here, we get an email to our inbox at 2.53 p.m., which is about... Uh, five minutes after I press the message button open the message up and we have nicknamed our spot locator as uh, the the Odyssey tracker and it gives the latitude and longitude which is helpful if you're doing search and rescue if you're looking for a street address you can actually just open up the uh, the link here and it will give us The map it even gives us the actual address 2004 Sandbridge Road which is right where we're at along with the latitude and longitude you can do the larger view of the map and you can zoom in and zoom out as you need but if you go to the street view courtesy of Google map look there's a 7-eleven that we were uh, sitting at there's a little office building and that's where we were parked handy little tool we've shown the system is very effective but the next question is how much does it cost well the first thing you have to do is buy the actual device and I've listed that up here uh, in the corner we purchased it from Amazon and then we went ahead and obtained a subscription for the device now, there are two types of subscription services there is the annual subscription and then there is the flex subscription we only needed it for a short period of time so we opted for the flex uh, subscription once we get back on the trip we can terminate the service until we head out on the next trip again and in the off season we won't use it also we think overall we will save some money doing this the next question is do you actually need the service and that's a big question you have to ask yourself that there is some level of comfort in knowing that with the push of a button in a worst case scenario you know that you are summoning Black Hawk helicopters from the Air National Guard and the Civil Air Patrol and State Police and County Sheriff's Department that is very reassuring especially when you're off grid and in areas where there's no cell phone coverage and if you just simply have a mechanical breakdown or you're the kind of person that can miss the road close sign jump a 50-yard chasm and have to rely on strangers to call you a tow truck well what could possibly go wrong with that scenario yeah. well I'm from out of town so what's the bill <laughs> what's the bill 
Come on, come on, come on. How much? How much you got? Well, guys, that pretty much completes the review of our spot Gen 4 uh, satellite communication system and emergency homing beacon. Um, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we, we're glad we picked up this piece of gear because we expect to be in some pretty remote places. Uh, one of the areas we're going to take is US 50 through Nevada, which Life Magazine once coined the loneliest road in America. It's lots of uh, open spaces between gas stations uh, and facilities. So it gives us a, just an extra level of comfort knowing that uh, even though we're going to be out of cell phone range, we can call for help. So. Until next time, folks, thanks for watching, and we're going to close up with some more photographs that you have sent us. Thanks for watching. Y'all take care.